give it a couple of squirts and then obviously I just run around the track. Welcome to the escarpment. This is my HO model railway build channel and I'm your host Jason. So today's video, a bit of a mixed bag, but the main theme is what I do with when it comes to track cleaning, basically. Now I've been using this method, I guess for the last about four and a half years. And prior to that, you know, I've done all the previous traditional type cleaning, track rubbers, fine sandpaper, IPA, you know, you name it, I've used it in the past. And to be honest with you, none of them worked. So the method I use, and it's not really track cleaning as such, it's more or less track coating. And uh, I'll show you the product and my tool and, and how I go about it very shortly. But I just wanted to, and I know there's a lot of videos out there about track cleaning, you know, and it's not about jumping on that bandwagon um, that I know best and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure if you're using something different to me and it's working, keep with it. Um, I just found, and really this video is just to show you my method. Um, and I've just found this, you know, to a point where I probably coat my track once in a blue moon. Um, you know, people have reached out and sort of said, wow, it must take a lot of time to clean and, and often, and you know, and that's the issue with having big layouts, blah, blah, blah. For me personally, it takes bugger all time. You know, I haven't jumped on this latest thing, latest trend, and I thought I'd put a video out and I've only been using it a week and everything's running great, no. And I know there's a lot of videos out there about this topic and I'm not here to preach and this is, not sponsored in any way. You know, the product I've come across, it's a little bit more expensive. I and mean, when I say a little bit more expensive, it's in comparison to those that use Inox. Um, I have used Inox, but I just find this product uh, far more superior. And then after I show you that technique, what I'm gonna do is just show you a couple of the projects that have been happening in the background. I know it's been a, a while since my last video, it's just, I think with one of the projects in the background, I've been so bogged down in it and, um, you know, making videos has been on the back burner. But anyway, with that said, let's head over to the workbench and I'll show you at least the product that I use and the tool that I use. Okay, so over here at the workbench, uh, just to take you through the product, you can see there in front, uh, Deoxit Gold G5. Now, I just grabbed this from eBay. I think it's about 50 bucks a can. I've had this can, well, this is my first an original can from four and a half years ago. And uh, look, it's still about halfway full. So, you know, I really haven't used that much of it in four years. The tool that I use is basically I take a block of wood and I'll cut it to length so it covers my main lines. I've got some of this stuff off eBay. It's a similar felt that I used for my sound deadening on the track, but uh, it's a sticky back. So you just cut it to size, peel it off, stick it on, and away you can go. And you know, once you've used that a few times, you can just take it off and put a new one on. So what I'm gonna do now is just take you over to the track and show you how I apply this product. So basically, as I've mentioned earlier, the block is cut long enough so I can do my main tracks at the same time and that just really cuts down time. Basically all I do, I just take this. Now, I've heard people talk about Inox and after they use it, you know, the trains won't run, blah, blah, blah. So it really depends on how much you put on. Like if you put a lot on, my advice would be let it dry before you start running trains on it, especially if you apply too much. I found even with this stuff, you know, if I really soak it, and then run a train over it. it, it really struggles until it actually dries and then it runs very smoothly. So basically all I do, give it a couple of squirts and then obviously I just run around the track and that's all I do. And I just go around the whole layout with that. And as I said, I can do two tracks at the same time. You can sort of see, you know, there's a bit of dirt, dust, crap coming off it. But uh, what this product does is actually fills in scratches and any other imperfections that you have on your track that's going to interfere with the electrical contact. 
And as I said, I would let that dry and then go from there. Now, how much do I use for my whole layout? With that squirt, I would probably get half the layout done and then I would come back, give it a couple more squirts and do the other half of the layout. I very rarely do this exercise. I just find this lasts so long before I have to apply it again. Um, and if there's any issues in between, it's normally because I've sort of come off a build related to dust on the track. So again, it's just wiping down. Worked for me over the last four and a half years brilliantly. I very rarely touch the track as far as cleaning or coating or whatever you want to call it. So one of the other major projects that I've accomplished, which was a big one, was getting the carpet laid in the train room. Now I use those 500 mil by 500 mil. Uh, you can sort of see there the uh, commercial carpet. I didn't bother with any underlay. It was just straight on the concrete with, I guess, the special glue that you get when laying this carpet. Now, it was a big job, must admit. It took a number of weekends, only due to the fact that, you know, if this room was empty, you know, it would have taken me probably a weekend to do. But because I had to get under the layout and, you know, all that type of stuff and get around stuff, it really, yeah, it took some time. But really, really happy with the results. And it just helps finish off the room and hopefully, you know, minimizes any echo, uh, especially when I do these videos. I notice in a couple of the video, past videos that I've done, you know, a little bit of an echo. Um, so with the carpet and basically the sound deadening material up on the walls and under the tracks, uh, it all helps because all my locos are sound. So it probably over time would get quite annoying with the echoes. But anyway, that's the big one that's been going on over Christmas, January, February type thing. As I said, I just spanned it out over a few weekends. The other project that I've been working on is these babies here. This is going to be my coal loader and you're going to have to excuse there's some chips and uh, stuff missing. It uh, took a bit of a tumble off the workbench, live and learn, and a few things broke off it. But lucky, luckily it's just a prototype, so it's not the actual final production version you can see there there's slightly two different sizes now that was my first design and all i had to go on was photos and trying to size it with the trains and then you know bringing my locos in and trying to do that size compar comparison from photos this one over here i was fortunate enough and i have to thank thank kieran he actually sent me the schematics for the Chimera, um, I hope I said that right, coal loader. So I was able to resize it. And really, I wasn't that far off. This one was probably 8.8 .8 millimeters wider in the bin. And probably about, I think it was 22.8 millimeters higher. So, you know, it, it wasn't too bad. It was pretty close. So this has all been CAD designed on the computer. And then I've taken it to the 3D printer to print out and it comes in a number of parts. Each of the foundations are done separately. These things here. I've also added some details. Still got a few details I haven't put on it yet. There's a whole bunch of stuff at the front of the bin. So I'll sort of be working on that as I get it to the production level. The heads are changed slightly when I redid, resized it. I believe the, the top half here did some corrugated stuff there, but then changed it to metal sheeting. And I've done the, the metal sheeting on the sides of it. And then obviously there's been lots of tweaks to it. Um, let's see, coal conveyor that'll come out of it. Now it's fully enclosed. I, I am currently working on a semi-open one. I don't know, we'll see how we go with that one. Obviously, I've got the horizontal lines with the corrugated iron. See there, I started to scratch in the vertical ones, but what I've done is gone back to my design and I've actually put that into the design. So the next print will actually have the horizontal and the vertical lines just to give you that breakup of the corrugated metal sheet sheeting that you see on the side. 
and then there's a whole bunch of internal stuff not on this model but it'll be an option in tide so you'll see the chutes you'll have ladders going up to the next level uh, next level have platforms and i've got a product that i'm using this product here if i can get that to focus but anyway it's very fine metal mesh and that will be cut to size and put on the platforms and so the details will be really really nice and then obviously up here with the windows what i've done is some clear corrugated sheet that will just then press into those areas and that'll just give the impression of the windows up on it i'm gonna add light in there and you'll get those shining out the windows. I've got a good night shot of this coal loader in real life, which shows some of the lighting positions and it looks really, really cool. So it's probably something I will do at some stage. People have asked me whether or not I'm going to sell these. So I'm a little bit nervous with the packaging and sending. I'll need to really work that out once I get to that point. So right now, what's taken up a lot of my time is I've got an issue with my printer where it's doing some weird crap and i'm working with the support team of the brand my issue at the moment i believe is i've got a faulty lcd screen it's just doing some weird stuff with lines on certain planes um, and it doesn't matter what i do you know different angles it's just weird and uh, i've got a couple of posts in that group uh, showing what I've found to date and um, you know everything that everyone suggested it's just doesn't work so that's why I, I believe I've got a hardware issue so until I get that resolved I can't really get this to a production level because I, I'm not satisfied with the lines in certain parts um, it's just something I'm sorry I'm not happy with so it's not something I would sell this one obviously it was the first prototype I don't know whether to maybe stick it up on eBay if someone wants the initial prototype. Obviously, it's got some work, like, for instance, on the barrel. You know, there will be some sanding that will need to be done just to smooth out some of those uh, lines. I can possibly have one of these in the package so you can do the platforms, cut it out. Again, the head, you know, it has some mark lines where it's a little bit of suction and i've actually got overcome that issue but you know it's it's very slight it's it's not something that's in your face and obviously it would come with the windows as well but anyway look i'm thinking about that one i don't know what to do there yet other than that look that's been taken up a lot of my time over the last couple of months and why you haven't seen me uh, besides those that follow me on my Facebook group, you sort of see updates there fairly regularly. But anyway, let's head back to the chair. That's the product. That's how I coat my track. And basically, they're the couple projects I've been working on, as you can see in the background there. Uh, very excited about those ones. Uh, once I sort out my printer issue and I pretty sure it's a hardware issue and probably an LCD screen issue until I get that resolved or get my other printer online obviously I've got a frozen transform that I'm actually upgrading and making it a higher resolution so hopefully parts will be starting to come in hopefully over the next couple of weeks for that so I'd like to get that project up and running and uh, really test what I can do on that one as well and it's not too much smaller than the, the Mega 8K um, which I think I can still fit some of the bigger components of this project behind me on it. But anyway, with that said, so until next time, have fun with the hobby, be kind to each other. Bye for now.